This video is intended to guide you through all the necessary fundamentals of driving your forklift competently and safely. It is divided into five sections. One, forklift safety checks. Two, operating procedures. Three, shutdown and parking. Four, refueling and recharging. Five, using attachments. Please note that no matter which forklift model you're operating, it is important to also read and fully understand the operator's manual before driving. Whilst we trust you will find this video useful, it is not intended to replace any written material. Your first job is to make a series of checks. These are all important for operational and safety reasons and should be undertaken on a daily basis before you start any work. Firstly, you'll need to check that the fluid levels are correct. For the engine oil, hydraulic oil and engine coolant. For other forklift brands, you will also need to check the levels of transmission oil, brake fluid and power steering fluid. Then check the belts and hoses both for tension and for any water or oil leaks. Ensure the starter battery terminals are clean and that the water level is topped up. If the truck is fitted with LPG, Check that all connections are tight, that there are no leaks, the cylinder is not out of date and that the forklift is fitted with an LPG compliance plate. The next step is to make a number of visual checks. Check all tyres for damage and wear. Remove any plastic around the wheels. Can you see any damage, cracks or signs of oil leaks on the mast assembly. Do the lift and tilt systems look okay? Are there any signs of leaks or damage to the chains or hoses? Is the load guard and carriage securely attached with no sign of damage? Are the fork arms straight and evenly spaced with no cracks or signs of excessive wear? Are the pins and locking devices secure to prevent the forks from sliding? Is the driver's seat and seat belt securely fitted and in good condition? Are the control decals properly fitted and clearly visible? Is the overhead guard secure? Are the mirrors and windscreens properly adjusted and clean? Is the load plate attached and readable? When you enter the cabin, do so from the left side. Do not hold the steering wheel for balance. Adjust your seat for comfort and correctly fasten your seat belt. If you're using an electric forklift, check that the emergency isolator is operational. Just before you start the engine, make sure the park brake is on and the forklift is in neutral gear. Before you drive, check that all the lights and gauges are functioning correctly. Also check the horn and the reverse beeper. Before you set off, make sure the immediate area is clear. It's also a good idea to check the ground for any oil or fluid stains after you've moved off. Drive forward and in reverse to make sure the brakes are functioning properly. Check the steering from lock to lock and be aware of any odd noises or unusual vibrations. Finally, check all the hydraulic functions. Operate the lift to the maximum, then lower again, all the while checking the hoses and chains. Operate the tilt forwards and to the rear. Move the side shift left and right to full extent, again for leaks and smooth operation. If you do find a fault, park the forklift, remove the key 
and place a do not use tag where it is clearly visible. Then report the fault to your supervisor immediately so that a technician can be called. You can only make minor repairs to a forklift if you are a qualified person and have been authorised by your employer to do so. Now that you're confident your forklift is in good working order, you must also check for hazards around you. Are there any power lines or overhead service lines that might be hazardous to you? In low clearance doorways, are the roller doors fully open? Is the floor surface you're working on firm? Are there bumps, holes or soft areas? Are there any surrounding buildings in close proximity? Check road bridges for height clearances and or weight restrictions. Are there railway lines or any other unusual obstructions within your workplace? Do you know where the walkways are for those on foot? Make certain you use the correct forklift and attachments to complete the job at hand. For example, if there is any dangerous material around, do you have the correct equipment to move it around? Remove any hazards such as string, plastic, pallet boards, cords. Clean up any spills that may cause slippage. Tell your co-workers if you will be operating near them. Make sure they're aware of your operation and, if necessary, place barriers around them. And finally, check that you are suitably clothed with safety boots and personal protective equipment where required. A safety vest is also recommended. Before you move off, check all around the forklift and give way to other traffic. Make sure you always keep a safe distance of approximately three vehicle lengths from other vehicles. And maintain a safe speed, suitable to the conditions you're working in. In general, road rules apply when operating a forklift, so keep left in the aisles. Use the horn at all blind corners and keep the flashing light on at all times. Always look in the direction of travel and when reversing, make sure you look over both shoulders to check that the area is clear. Always keep all parts of your body within the cabin when travelling. Remember that the rear end of the forklift can travel up to three and a half times faster than the front when turning. This can create a hazard particularly for pedestrians. When driving from outside to in, or vice versa, allow a few seconds for your eyes to adjust to the light change. Slow down through puddles, as the surface may be very slippery. If you need to cross railway tracks, either use a ramp or cross at a 45 degree angle. When travelling on an incline, the load should always face uphill to ensure stability of the load and forklift. Drive forwards up the hill. However, if the load obstructs your vision, have another person guide you. If you're not carrying a load, reverse up the hill and drive forwards down the hill. Never turn or drive across an incline. The forklift may tip over. If your load is unbalanced, keep the heavy side of the load at the heel of the tines. Keep your forklift and load at least two metres away from distribution power lines and at least six metres away from transmission power lines. If you do contact a power line, warn other people to stand clear. 
stay on the forklift and have someone turn the power off. Try and break contact by reversing away. And if you must jump off, don't touch the ground and the forklift at the same time. And of course, no passengers are ever allowed to be carried at any time unless an approved seat and footrest is fitted within the confines of the overhead guard. When approaching a stack, slowly turn and face it square on. If you are not square on, shunt the forklift until you are. Remember that a forklift is just like a seesaw. The balance point is the front wheels. So if you lift too much weight, the truck will become unstable during braking and steering. The rear wheels may lift off the ground. So ensure you check the lift height, load centre distribution and safe working load for your model. The load centre distance is measured from the vertical face of the forks to the centre of gravity of the load. Remember, the longer the load centre distance, the less weight a forklift can carry. Check the weight of the load against the rating plate. If no weight is marked on the load, check the consignment note. Ask your supervisor or calculate the weight by weighing one carton and multiplying that by the amount on the pallet. Then add 60 kilograms for the pallet. As you approach the pallet, Bring the mast to vertical to make entry easier. Raise the forks to the required level. Remember to use your park brake if you're on an incline. As you enter the load, make adjustments to the fork height to avoid scraping the pallet. Raise the load with a slight back tilt. Check you have sufficient clearance above the load. Before reversing, look over both shoulders to ensure that the area is clear. As you prepare to travel, lower the load to just above ground level and below axle height with enough rear tilt to stabilize it. Check that the load is high enough to clear any bumps or rises on the floor. In a reach truck, the travel position for the load is just above the legs, with the mast reached back and enough rear tilt to stabilize the load. Always proceed with caution. If your vision is obscured, you may need to travel in reverse. If that's the case, make sure you look in the direction of travel. Approach the stack or rack with rear tilt. Turn and face the stack and shunt if required. Bring the mast to vertical or use slight back tilt if required before raising the load. Check the capacity and stability of the rack or stack. Make sure it's rated for the load you're carrying. If you're stacking on top of another load, firstly ensure the bottom stack is stable. If you are putting a load onto a rack, raise the load to the required height, making sure there is enough clearance overhead. Remember to use the park brake if you're stacking on an incline. Drive forwards until the load is squarely over the stack. Check for clearance as you go. Lower the load and check for stability. Settle the load evenly and lock onto the rack. Look over both shoulders before reversing clear of the rack. Don't scrape the load or the rack. Lower the forks to the travel position just above ground level. Again, look over both shoulders before reversing to make sure the road is clear.